ceremony has served in this community for over 25 years, and I'm proud to say that he's a mentor of mine. Above all, I can say, and I can say proudly, that he served. And so instead of going down all of his accomplishments, instead of highlighting all of his victories, I'll just say and introduce to you the Master of Ceremony, Mr. Attorney Michael Brown. The events associated with the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, the Montgomery Boys Bus, Bus Boycott, the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, and the Congress for, of Racial Equality have changed our lives. During this time, Brown versus the Board of Education, the NLACP, the March on Washington, the work of the National Urban League, the Black Church, Media coverage of the brutal treatment of black Americans awakened the conscience of America that led to the 1964 Civil Rights Act. We would not be moved 
even though confronted by police dogs and war hoses altogether. May God help us to exercise more seriously our right to vote and our pursuit of equality. God strengthen us in the ongoing struggle for freedom, civil rights, and justice. Thank you. Ms. Carolyn Davis. Praise the Lord. Good afternoon, everybody. Lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven rings. Ring the
and we're glad to have him. Thank you, Congressman, for joining us today. Prepare yourself to be challenged, excited, and inspired. And again, on behalf of the Call to Action Luncheon Committee, we welcome you. Thank you. Welcome, everyone, to the fourth annual Call to Action chapter of the Florida Democratic Black Caucus. So why are we here? Some of us are here because we want to network, socialize. Um, we do have campaigns coming up very, very soon, March 10th, please hold. Uh, but the reason for this occasion is much, much more important. Um, the strength of unity speaks volumes. We all are passionate about different things, but we all know that there's strength in numbers. We all know that regardless to where we started out, we know where we want to end. We know where we want our journey to end. So this is not a simulation, right? Simulation is something you might do in law enforcement or even driver training, right? They have the teams to drive cars, to simulate when you're drinking and driving. But we're here for the real deal, right? This is not a simulation. We're here for the real deal because we're passionately battling for something such as restoration of rights for reformed felons, civil rights, women's rights, equal pay, But as I said, at the end of the day, the reason for this occasion is to make certain that everyone leaves here today with a clear message and a charge, not just a message, right? We come, we eat, we dine, we have fun, but when we leave here, we need to understand that we have a purpose and a calling, and it would be a shame for us each and every one of us not to meet that requirement because we were not put on this earth for only socialization and only befriending. But when we leave here, right, that dash in between, the birth date and the death date, that's where we are together. So that's the reason for this occasion because this is a public battle. We might have private battles with our kids or at home, but this is a public battle that we're all in together. We're all fighting together for common goals. So just remember, when you leave, find someone who's campaigning, or who's working on a civic issue. Join our, the caucus, join the Black Caucus, because there's never a time that we are working on some issue to better our community. Remember, there is strength in unity. Thank you. Let's make sure we understand and give Lynn a hand. He's done a great job. officials and dignitaries here in the, in the room. I, um, I'm going to try to see everybody from the back and front and call you. If I don't call you, just raise yourself and just stand right on up. Okay. All right. Clarence Williams III, the Chief of Police for the City of Riviera Beach. If it wasn't for his lovely wife, he wouldn't be the greatest chief in Palm Beach County. So that's Admiral Williams. I would like to acknowledge Edward Kinsey, one of our long-standing family in the in Palm Beach County, and I'm so glad to have him here with us. This is no particular order, it's just that how I can really see you. Okay, I see Lloyd Jones from Martin County Democratic Black Caucus President over there. We have Sean Kinsey, Polk County Democratic Black Caucus. <laughs> Francina Allen Garcia, Lake County Democratic Black Caucus. Okay, we have Mick Caesar. Mick Caesar is the Democratic National.
National Caucus member. He's one of the, the National Democratic members. Okay, Rita Lowe, uh, member, vice chair of the Democratic Black Caucus, and also a retired commissioner from the city of Lake Worth. Okay, we have my dear friend James Green over there. He does a lot of work for the county, the youth, the families of Palm Beach County. We have Ms. Garrett, she's a principal in our school system here at Riviera Beach Public Word Academy. I told Mark Pappard in the back. <laughs> Susan Booker. <laughs> Keith James. <laughs> I'm going to be Mr. Drew Arden, the very first person to register for this event. Let's give Drew Arden a hand. I see the Andre Poole, he is the vice chair of the Democratic Party. John Ramos is the state committee man. Buddy Simon, state committee woman. See how nice they are, they stand up because they know how to see well. And we see Karen Rizzo, our chair. I'm Marsha Andrews, our school board member. Okay, also, Jim Wright, our board commissioner. We want to see one of our favorite commissioners, Jess Santa Maria. Yeah. This, is one of our, this is one of our great supporters for uh, the Democratic Black Caucus, and we want to thank all of his guests for coming out and, and joining him today. And we definitely want to thank um, Ethel and FPNL for. Um, supporting us as well. Thank you. I said I was going to let, okay, she'll get two times. It's the mayor of West Palm Beach. I was going to go. Time for Roman. Timberly Mitchell. Time for uh, Councilman Keith James. Sylvia Moffitt. And right now we have, um, from the Florida Democratic Party, we have Jeff Branch, who is our um, field director, a political director. Everybody in the city has to play a role, has to be 
visible to the city government, and the city government has to be visible to everybody. That means that even though District 4 is out in the West, and that's where I'm running, my pledge to you is to be visible, attentive, and a party to what you are concerned about. If that's what you want, then I invite you to vote for me on March 10th. If you're satisfied with being unheard in City Hall, then you have a choice. Have a wonderful day. Also, I'd like to um, make a point of the fact that um, Francine Garcia and Alan Garcia came all the way from Lake County to be with us this afternoon, and I want to thank them for that. Sean Kendall came all the way from Little Haven, and I don't want them to think that I'm just rushing over that. I want to acknowledge that because I really appreciate everybody traveling. And we have Miss um, Moselle Jackson, who is our treasurer. She has two tables of people that came to support her. And Leah Gaines, she's the president of our NAACP. We will give our hands to you. What do you want to say anything? Oh, good And if you understand that at one time, 
uh, Florida, people don't realize this, led the nation in lynching. Okay? And so I know there are a lot of good people in Polk County now, and I know there are a lot of good people in Lake County. But even when I go through that, now I wasn't, I'm not old enough to have really experienced it, but I can read pretty well. And, and my parents and the people tell me. So when I go through Polk County and Lake County and Nassau County, but I go through some of those counties now, and I'm like, hmm. So I want to get a special, I'm not saying anything about the Gallatins before a lot of y'all or from one part, but those people from Polk County and Lake can stand up. Let's get some Detroit, Michigan. I am here from Union Grace Missionary Baptist Church where the pastor is the Reginald Everlasting Smith who is a very, he's very proactive in the community. He's really about taking initiative and doing things for the community and helping and getting us out to vote. So, I'm going to do this acapella rendition just to bring us back into our groups where the church organizations will be going to the
God, we thank you for allowing us to be here together. We thank you for life, health, and strength. And we thank you, most importantly, for one more day. Now, oh God, as we invoke your presence in this place at this hour, we ask that you bless the food in front of us, God, that it might be used for the nourishment of our bodies. If you do this for us, we'll be careful to give you all of the honor, all of the glory, and all of the praise that shall be done. And all who believe, say amen. 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 And be true to the legacy our ancestors bequeathed us to. We must protect our heritage, our community, our future by showing a united front and being united in our goals. Thank you. Our party is about jobs, jobs for health care. As the president pushed through and vowed to fought to get the health care bill, we now all know our health care. So when you distinguish it between the party, one that claims that it really is religious, it follows the Bible, and you take it by the truth. So what if you announce it, it says you follow the Bible, the Bible says love thy neighbor. And if you love your neighbor, if you love your neighbor, how can you be against your neighbor getting health care? If you love your neighbor, how can you be against feeding your neighbor and children? So as he comes forward to give a DNC update, I just wanted to break that down because that's our party. That's who we are. That's what we stand for. And so Mr. Mitzi will come forward and give an update from the executive board. Uh, my name is Mitch Caesar. I'm on the executive board of the Democratic National Committee. Uh, I'm also, uh, in my spare time, the chairman of the Democratic Party of Broward County. That if we're going to walk the walk, we need to talk the talk. And what that means specifically is, since we chose Philadelphia, we thought it was very important, and this is a good difference between Democrats and Republicans. We said, you know what? We're in Philadelphia. We need to keep to our word. We want to make sure that vendors who do business with the Democratic Party or the National Convention are minority vendors. We agree there should be a minimum wage hike. We all agree that there's not enough affordable housing. We all agree that stand your ground needs to take a walk out somewhere and just disappear into the night. That we have to stand together united. We all know what we stand for. It doesn't matter if we're black or white or Hispanic or gay or straight. We have core beliefs. And most of those core beliefs are held by the majority of the American people. That is why we have to stand together. When Dr. King said in his famous speech that he could see in the horizon a place that he might not get to, but that others would, we need to make that dream our dream by being united, standing together, talking about issues, and that is how Democrats win elections. My name is the Reverend Elvin J. Dowling, and I'm just kick off proud and hyena happy to be standing up here today to introduce today's speaker. Today we have the opportunity to hear from a wonderful leader by the name of Malloy Williams. Uh, the uh, MC was a great I heard last year, and the guy who introduced me, I was thinking about him giving a speech that he just sit down and just be quiet. Uh, a lot of you don't know me, but I have a nephew back there by Alan Weave and his daughters. Uh, Alan, stand up. And I stand up. And that's my brother's house. My brother's house. And you all might know my brother. Uh, he's the late uh, Gerald Williams. I've been here a while. And the topic of the day is supposed to be how we come together as a people. Not just Democrats, but how do we come together as a people? Now, Frederick Douglass says, if there is no struggle, there is no progress. Those who profess to favor freedom and yet depreciate agitation are like men who will prime the soil without prime, get across by prime the soil, or who want ocean without the roar of its many waters. This struggle may be a moral one or it may be a physical one, but it may be both moral and physical, but it must be a struggle. Power concedes nothing without a demand. It never has, and it never will. Now, the reason I 
say that, I want y'all to listen to some statistics that I'm going to give you. And then after that, we'll begin a conversation. Did you know that one in six black men are incarcerated? One in 100 African American women are incarcerated. Nearly one million of the 2.3 million people in jail are black. African Americans and Latinos make up 58% of the criminals that are in jail. About 14 million whites and 2.6 million African Americans report using drugs. But five times as many whites do drugs. But 10 times as many African Americans go to jail. Say that again. Five times, they create five times more drug use. Yet, 10 times more African Americans go to jail. Now, when you start looking at some other statistics, in 2002, 80% of all people who are in jail look like us or you look right. Now, I'm going to now give you some other quotes, two quotes by Carter G. Woods. Y'all know who he is? Yeah. All right. This, this is what he had to say. If you could control a man's thinking, you do not have to worry about his actions. When you determine what a man shall think, you do not have to concern yourself about what he will do. If you make a man feel that he is inferior, you do not have to compel him to accept an inferior status. For he will seek it himself. If you make a man think that he is justly an outcast, you do not have to order him to the back door. He will go without being told. And if there is no back door, he will make one for his very purpose. And the sad, sad thing he said is this. If you teach the Negro that he has accomplished as much as any other race, he will aspire to equality and justice without regard to race. Such an effort would upset the pro pro program of the oppressors in Africa and America. Pray up before the Negro then his crimes, his shortcomings. Let him learn to admire the Hebrew, the Greek, the Latin, and the Teuton. Leave the Negro to the test the man of African blood and hate himself. That's what's been done to us. And a lot of times we have done it to ourselves because we always go around talking about black on black crime. Did you know that black people kill black people at the same rate that white people kill white people? But you don't hear them say white on white crime. They get us to believe that we are criminals and not them. Now, we have got to begin to take our history back. Take about who we are. Now, what I want you to understand is this. Language is everything. We always go around saying that we were slaves. No, we weren't. We were enslaved. Do you understand the difference? We need to go out and begin to tell our children that we were always a free-thinking people. Look at how many slave revolts went on. Over 200,000 Africans fought in the Civil War. So when they tell you you didn't fight, fight for your freedom, you fought for your freedom every day. Booker T. Washington <coughs> opened a school right out of slavery. When you look at the accomplishments that African Americans have done, it would be so much. And when I hear us talking about African American history, I get upset because clearly we've done more than what they told us we've done. Clearly, we've done more than what they've done here in America. See, it's okay for you to know about what 
what you've done in America. Because if you relegate yourself to that, they can take credit. Because guess what? If we hadn't bought you all little heathens and slaves from Africa, you would not be doing what you're doing now. So you ought to be grateful. And I hear black people all the time say, I am so glad I'm not in Africa. I'm glad they took me. Not realizing that we were the mothers and fathers of civilization. See, you're so glad we got the internet now. Because the things that I tell you, you can go on the internet and see. Did you know that the first university in the world was in St. Gore? And where? Where the fuck was it? Timbuktu. Where is that located? Did you know that the Moors conquered and ruled Spain for 700 years? Did you know? See, we need to start telling our children where they came from. See, we didn't just come from America. We were brought to America. We come from great stock. And stop telling your children, please, stop telling your children that we are kings and queens. But they know they can't be true. We all could be kings and queens. I would love to think that, but I know it can't be. But you can tell them they were engineers, that they were doctors, that they were scientists. Do you understand? We come from great stock. But we don't do it. We don't tell each other. We don't let them know about Queen Hatshepsut, an African queen who ruled as a man. We don't tell them about Imhotep, the true father of medicine. The Greeks thought so much of him, they made him a god. Do you understand what kind of people we come from? But we have to have a common purpose. If you don't believe in each other, if we stop telling these lies about us being criminals, because we're not. In 1980, only 300,000 people were in prison nationwide. When Ronald Reagan declared war on drugs, only 2% of people thought that was a major issue. Only 2%. Now, from 1980 to 2004, 2 million, 2.4 million are in prison. They look like us. That's not our legacy. That's not our legacy. Did you realize that whites commit more crimes than we do? Did you realize that for doing drugs, we get 58, the average of 58 months in jail? If a white man does a violent crime, he only does 58 months. Something's wrong with that. Something's wrong with that. But let me tell you something. It's a call to action. You all have got to start coming up with what we want to do. Trayvon Martin is over three years old. That law is still on the books. And we want to say, look, we got to go to the legislation. We didn't get things done in the past by going to the legislation. Now that we think we're part of the system, we think we have to operate within the system. Churches need to be going up to Tallahassee, complaining about this law. Not just one or two people, on a mass level. We see black boys killed, killed. Nothing. We sit back and hope it goes away. We can't keep doing this, people. You know, we have got to come up with a plan. The AKAs and the Kappas need to work together. The Deltas and the Omegas need to work together. Our churches need to work together. We need to get together with the Democratic Party and say, look, if you want our vote, if you want our participation, we need White children? Well, clearly you're going to find who don't want me because I got 50 more opportunities to do it. We do drugs at the same rate, basically. Did you know two thirds of all crack is done by white folks? How many white people do you see in jail for crack? Do you understand?
understand it is a system that has taken us down. And because they gave our churches the 501c3, they no longer fight for us. In civil rights. We did it from where? The church. And when we got through marching, we went back to where? The church. Where are the ministers now? Why are they standing up for all these principles? Look, in New York City, 500 and some thousand stops. Stop and frisk. 70 or 80 percent are black. If you tell me if those ministers say, look, we are no longer going to buy any merchants in New York. We're going to New Jersey to shop. You think that lowered the state? We have people that are saying, what did Carnegie Wilson say? What did uh, Frederick Douglass say? How can seize nothing without a demand? I am asking you, we have got to come up with a plan and demand our freedom. Demand that these laws are changed. And if they are not changed, we have got to step up and sacrifice and say, look, I'm not going to buy daddy no shoes this week. Because guess what? They're not treating us right. That's how we make change. That's how change is made all over the world by demanding that it take place. So I'm asking you, when you go and talk about black history next week, because we're not going to let them tell us we got one more money. See, black history, let me tell you what the Greeks said. Let me tell you what the Greeks said. How Herodotus, who's the father of history, said that the Egyptians could trace that history 11,000 years before the Greeks even existed. And that's what he said. I, I wasn't there. I wasn't there. But, but, but I can tell you now, that is what Herodotus said. Why don't we tell our children that? Why don't we tell them? Why don't we tell them that the Dogon tribe in West Africa could say the Cyrus star has two stars, and the smallest one is the heaviest, and you cannot see it. It was not known until Western civilization until 1930. How did the Dogon people know this? When you talk about the Pythagoras theorem, Pythagoras studied in Africa for 20 years. The pyramids could not be built without the knowledge of Pythagoras theorem. But they thought that the pyramids are 2,500 years older than Pythagoras. Do y'all understand? We have got to change our mindset. All right. You can't be free without a free mind. <laughs> Frank Delon said, Who am I? Who am I? <laughs> am I really who I am? Do I really understand who I am? And am I all out to be? You can go all over the world and you will see accomplishments by African people. And you know how to keep a secret? <laughs> no, don't say that. We read. But they just don't tell us who it is. Let me tell you how you hype and indoctrinate people. When it's something bad, I say it's bad. When it's something good, I just leave it to yeah. And what do you want to do? There you go. That's how it's done. We've got to teach our children that we come from greatness. Yes. Not kings and queens, but thinkers. People who help shape the universe. See, let me tell you something. Racism is a, is a, is a short-lived thing. Only in the 14th century did this racism come about. They have black folks. Y'all know that? Black rulers of, of Rome. Did y'all know that? See, I, I am so glad to hear it. When they passed a law the other day that the internet becomes neutral, yes. that is so good. Because yes. now you all can still look up on the internet. I saw the other day, I, I, I'm not lying, a, a, a Chinaman, Chinese person named Lin said that the earliest inhabitants of China were African. I didn't make this up. And you know, all you got to do is go on the internet and see it. But it doesn't mean a thing. Not one thing. If we don't take a call to action and say we're going to put a stop 
to us not doing it. He's going to start writing letters, going up to Tallahassee, going up to Washington, and say, look, we need to vote. We need equal wages. We need equal wages. These are issues that are important to us, but we don't fight for them anymore. You know, we get to the point, and I hope this is not true, and I hope it's not true, but Lee Daniels, who did the Butler, said, and I saw the interview, so I said I know it's true, and he said that it's okay to be a sellout. Wow. Now, now, go look it up on Facebook. I mean, I don't want to tell them to take I think I tell kids they're not going to talk about this. Don't believe nothing in the four pillars. Nothing. Go research it for yourself. But so once you research it, it'll be in your heart. Be your heart. Money cannot be the overriding thing. That's what I want you all to understand. We have, I, got great, I got grandchildren, nieces, and I want them to understand when they look in the mirror that they're beautiful. You understand? I want them to look in the mirror and know that they come from greatness. Not just their immediate family, but when you go back and trace your roots, it ought to be a shame when you take world history, world history, you get this much on Africa and they call it pre-history. Now, can anybody want to do that definition? What is pre-history? It's not, it does not exist. So, my job today is hopefully inspire you to understand that there are three or four issues that we need to address. This prison system, can you imagine if we were incarcerating Black, white boys at the same way we're in crack and incarcerating black boys. Oh, oh, that, would be so that would be an uprising. But we are trained. When I say we, I'm talking about us adults. We are set back, not doing what we should be doing, not teaching our children that they are special. Yes. All right. Yes. All right? Yes. That's our fault. I went to a, a ceremony, Easter, not last year, Easter ceremony. And the kids were reading their speeches. Oh my God, come on. I remember when we were, we had to learn our speeches. We had to learn our speeches. We had to teach our children to get to it. They have the capability. Why don't we teach them that? I, that's why I remember the boys. I remember the space. Because it's important to understand that our children can do it. If your ancestors did it, then you can do it. When I was in Africa, they had young children, seven and eight years old, speaking three, four languages. Do you understand? That's where we come from. That's our heritage. So I, I, I don't want to keep you all too long. And I didn't really come here to give you a lesson on African history. But I can tell you this. If you ever start studying it, your chest will come out to you. Because if you start looking for all the things that you've done before we came to America, before we came to America, then you would say, my God, we are some power. Right? And if you read, I tell people all the time, read the books with the Greeks wrote. See what the Greeks had to say. Because if you look at the Iliad and the Odyssey, have you ever read that book? But you didn't read it with an African man, right here. You read it with an African man. For the first time I read it, I missed it. They thought the Egyptian and the Ethiopian were so powerful that in the Iliad and the Odyssey it says, you cannot talk to the gods today because the gods are going to have lunch with the Ethiopians. <laughs> you understand? Alexander the Great never spent another day in Greece once he comes from uh, Egypt. Did y'all know that? Now, and here's another story that we, we all we all find that Mark Anthony wouldn't go back to Rome because he was in love with Cleopatra. I just conquered you. I can take you anywhere I want to take you. Do you understand? He didn't want to go back because he was in civilization. Do you understand? That's what y'all need to understand. Check out the boys. I mean, I, I can't teach you all this. But I can tell you that we have got to be committed to being better. 
We've got to be committed to changing these laws that are affecting our children. And if we don't change it, we are going to be a generation lost. We are going to be a generation lost. We've got to change these laws. And we, if we cannot change them through the courts, if we cannot change them through legislation, then we have to take action and go to the streets, start boycotting, doing whatever it takes. Because these laws are affecting our children. Walking around with their pants all hanging low. All right. Because we don't teach them no better. All right. And I know our English is not correct. But you understand, we don't teach them no better. That's what I want you all to understand. They don't understand who they are. They don't understand their greatness because we have not told them. We have got to change the money. We want to be the richest and the baddest instead of being the smartest and the greatest. That's the I always know it's a ridiculous, so I know a lot of the guys know this. This is out of the night that covers me. Black as a pit from pole to pole. I think whatever God's may be, but mine are comfortable. So. In the frail touch of circumstance, I have not wished nor cried aloud. In the bludgeoning of chance, my head is bloodied, but in my In this place of rapid tears looms for the horrors of the city. And yet the minutes of the years find and shall find me unfree. It matters not how straight the gate, how charged with punishment the scroll. Where I'm the master of my fate, I am the captain of my fate. Let us work that which is good toward all men, and especially toward them that are of the household of faith. And I just want to say that what I've learned because I have probably just been a part of a movement but not really known what, what, how deep and how rooted it is. And what I've learned today is that the people that we're celebrating now, that, that we're giving, giving these awards to, they have the power to help. And they've helped this organization. They have stood behind people, even though they were greater, but they took, they stood in the back and they lifted folk up and they carried them and pushed them and they made sure that you recognize who they were. So this song is uh, Wind Beneath My Wings because we want to thank those people who have given, walked, talked, met, you know, organized. And so. This is my song to say thank you and for your dedication and for your service to this organization and those up and coming politicians. All right. This. But I have a key right here in my heart. I want you to know I know the truth.
when you go to these elections coming up, realize that people like this other member who are out there trying to do something with nothing. This is indeed a wonderful friend of mine, Ms. Rosell Jackson. Last but not least, the young woman's That's Representative Bobby Cowell. He's showing up. He's showing up. He's showing up.
leaders through organizations. So you went from Imhotep and, and Ramses and all of that as the brother talked about. But in this generation of leadership today, we are less of a snapshot of what it was in the 60s. So you had SNCC with Stokely Carmichael and John Lewis. You had the Urban League with Whitney Young. You had the NACP with Roy Wilkins. You had Elijah Muhammad in the Nation of Islam and Malcolm X. You had James Farmer and the Freedom Riders with Cole. You had, in Oakland, California, Huey P. Newton and the Black Panthers. And then you had somebody in history that we don't even talk about it today, a giant amongst giants, that you didn't see her, but she was there. Just look at the photos. National Council of Negro Women, Dorothy Hodge. So in the game of this process, that was the leadership then moving for a better America. The possibilities of what we represent and what we should be. So if you go now to today, a snapshot of that and where we fall as a people and as a community. Some of us went to, mar to march on Selma because we felt and we were engaged in civil rights. Some of us went to Selma because of the brutality that was witnessed on TV. But do I want somebody to march on Selma because of the brutality, or do I want somebody that's rooted in the struggle of civil rights? Do I want somebody that gets caught up in the euphoria of voting for a black president so much that you go down to Washington, D.C. in 10 degree weather but you come back home and you ain't doing nothing. It's not about titles, people. It's about the legacy that you leave and you represent. My father, I believe you with my father told me when I was going on a hot day. To the prom. To the sister named Evelyn. Dad said, hey, you know, what you gonna do after the prom? I said, well, I'm I'm going to go to where we hang out and take her home. He said, okay, well, just because you leave with her doesn't mean you're going to go home with her. I thought about that. And you can take the impression in your mind what that meant when he told me. But what that meant was he got me a little car. I went to pick her up. I met her mama, but I didn't meet her father. So I had to go pick her up at the house. But guess who came to pick her up after the event? Her dad. So she didn't leave home with, you know, I didn't take her home. But my point, people, is that sometimes who you go to the dance with is not who you're going to finish with. Just because you meet somebody in school and he courts you don't mean that's going to be your husband. Sometimes in the beginning in the struggle, you got some folks that are working with you. But if it doesn't mesh, going to the second level, it's not personal. It's business. And we're in the business of building people. Black people in particular. But we do believe in a coalition. Right? Because if you dream and you don't put no goals to your dream, then it's just a dream. If you have goals and you don't put benchmarks on your goals, then the goals go away. But if you can't define your purpose, right? Because when you come out of your mama's womb, you come out in suspended animation until you take the breath of life. That is the common denominator, not life. But my point in closing and telling you this, that if you don't define your purpose, then you just live. You just live without a purpose. We don't want to live or die without a purpose. Leave a legacy. Thank you very much for being part of the